Hi guys and welcome to another vlog. I'm driving this. This is the third generation of the Mercedes GLS codenamed X167. This is the facelifted model. Yes, the 2024 model which has taken almost 8-10 months to arrive in India. So yes, Mercedes is running a bit delayed in getting the GLS back to India. And this being the facelift has very minor changes. Obviously, you can see the grill has become bigger now. Let's open the engine bay. There is no change to the engine. Yes, this petrol engine is the same as before. Says 6 cylinder here. I don't know how it's got so dirty because the car has done barely 400 kilometers. There's insulation there washer fluid goes in right there there is the battery of course and there is enough space to put a 4 litre biturbo V8 which will also come in obviously the GLS Mike Buck or the GLS 63 AMG which probably will not come to India so I'm crying right now <laughs> the grill is huge in fact they've made the grill like really big now which doesn't look that attractive as it was earlier. The big Mercedes logo actually has radars behind. There's another small chintum into Mercedes logo there. Yes, the BMW X7 is the immediate rival of this car and the X7 is wider and taller when compared to the GLS. The grille is obviously bigger, but the bumper is also new with this fake stuff happening here. Why is this not open? Nothing is open here. That's quite surprising. You get six parking sensors at the front because obviously it has got six ultrasonic sensors for self-park, which works under 18 kilometers per hour, says Mercedes-Benz here. In fact, it has got 84 LEDs. It even says 84 on the inside. Can you see that? Yeah, somewhere it's written 84. Meanwhile, it says multi-beam LED. The lights look very similar to what they were before, but I believe Mercedes says that they made minor changes to that. So probably they must have. Power bulge on the bonnet. This has laminated glass and it has infrared film as well so a lot of this stuff is already there on this car so a lot of things on the GLS are actually the same and compared to before the length is more than 5.2 meters the wheelbase that's more than 3.1 meters so yes it is longer and also has a longer wheelbase when compared to the BMW X7 and right now it is on the off-road height because air suspension of course and you can see the ground clearance is quite a lot that is the suspension the tire size is also massive 275 45 21s at the front but disappointingly they have not made changes to the alloy wheel design why Mercedes why and you can see the lug nuts they're kind of cool in fact it even projects the mercedes logo at night from the outside rear view mirrors which it has been doing before as well and it has light coming out from the footboard too two cameras there for the lane keep assist i don't know why they have this sort of covering on the viper and it says carl benz here mercedes benz written right there a lot of branding on this car but finally they have added request sensor so you put your hand and the car will unlock that feature was not there in the pre facelift model now you can put your hand on any of the door handles and it will automatically unlock rear tire size is even bigger because this is a 315 40 21 this is a massive rear tire look at that that's massive well that's what she said and the lights have been revised at the rear it says mercedes benz on the inside it gets these new motives in fact when you unlock the car it does this sort of a light show too that is the rear fog light only there on one side i think the other one is for the reverse light of course rear bumper is the same as before so not many changes at the rear and a lot of chrome chrome here chrome there chrome almost everywhere says formatic there gls 450 is the petrol you add a d it becomes a diesel of course Fake fingers of truth will not help here because the real exhaust is placed right below yeah that is the real exhaust of this car i don't know why mercedes does this fake stuff parking sensors here cameras hidden right there so it obviously comes out when you get into reverse that is and there's a lot of space with all the three rows up it still has good amount of space to carry your luggage in fact here is the spare wheel yes it gets a not a full-size spare wheel 155 is the size of the spare tire so yeah it's chintum into it is 155 one second let me just see 80 19 so i've put the parcel shelf here otherwise you can fix the parcel shelf right there so that can be removed and there's a proper place to keep it in fact that is jack i don't know where rose is and then a lot of stuff like first aid kit and all has been put here it's a little cumbersome to use this so i'm just going to skip you get a 12 volt charging socket this car has got 11 usb c charging sockets and this is to put the right head down so if i press a button there the ride height will go down from the rear so that it's easier to load in stuff so that's another cool feature in this car i mean i don't understand the whole idea of this because obviously if i can lift this much i can lift this much as well so yeah that doesn't make any sense at all these buttons are to operate the last row of seats these buttons are to operate the second row of seats but i will just do one thing i will put all the seats down so i press a button i've already pressed it the headrest is going up and then all the seats will go down so i have a massive boot in fact now I can comfortably sleep inside this car because there's so much space which is unfreaking believable. Let's bring the seats back. So I press a button there and... Jimmy. 
all the seats are electric of course and the best part is that you can control these seats from the front too which is fantastic there you can see uh, there's no under thigh support absolutely none light placement here so the usual bits as compared to what was there before it's a very practical car independently if you want to move the seats no problem you can do that like this press a button there it is a bit slow yeah the seats are very slow in fact if i recline the seat now then it will first move that seat and then only it will move so that's kind of cool now you just come back up let's shut this powered of course so everything is powered in this car which is fantastic look at the gls huge presence because this is a massive car yeah it's a massive 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 car with small lights yeah the lights could be bigger obviously you get cameras on the outside rear view mirrors you get cameras everywhere and you want to get to the rear very easy i just press this button and just notice this okay this seat will go ahead and then it will rise up so that i can walk into the rear okay it has got nine freaking airbags that's plenty of airbags this will now make some sound yeah come on move 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 move, move. now i can actually walk into the rear that is so easy so those are the rear seats and obviously isofix child seat mounts have been given to put this headrest up is a task because i have to keep pushing it oh my goodness and uh, still it does not slot because it has to reach like really high up then only it works uh, uh, you see how high i put it uh, no it has to be like really high then only it works so yeah the headrest could have been done better speakers almost everywhere you remove this if you want to put the parcel shelf here you can do that as well meanwhile cup holder two usb c charging sockets and this is so that i can actually recline the seats so yeah i can actually pull the seat back from here that's easy right but once this seat comes back i realize this is a name six seven seater because this is not for adults it's for children so i can use this button as well to push this behind if you notice this is the full recline this is upright when this is reclined as well there's absolutely no space for me and under thigh support is super poor headroom is not that great either meanwhile the older gls the second generation model had a roof here glass roof here with more space so i don't know why they've gone backwards same thing i can do here as well plastics ac vents here on the top it has five zone climate control air conditioning system but i have no controls here like in the bmw x7 i want to get out from here so i press this button there the seat will go ahead by the way this is a 40 20 40 recline because i can recline this independently as well so i'm just going to push this cannot fold second row seat see owner's manual okay i'll just take this back up it's a bit <laughs> R&D happening right now, but there it raises itself and a lot of electronics in this car. I can just pull this and put the seat down, but then it's going to crash against the screen right ahead. So a little bit of R&D on my end as well, but let's bring this back and then let's push it ahead here. Now I will, okay, why is it not up now? Yes, I have done this. The problem is now how do I get out? I have to jump over. So it's easy actually it's not that difficult but this is the only manual thing which you have to do in this car thankfully i am very athletic so i'll just jump out either way no height adjustment here height adjustment on the front seat there's a hook here ac vents right there and there's a hook as well as a handle and a light and a microphone too there's a light there as well and the headrest are super soft here with this cushion of course so let me just jump out and i'm going to press this button so there are buttons here as well which lets me operate these seats which is so freaking cool because I'm just going to press a button. Come on. There you see. So lot. Oh, you saw this seat also move that. It's so amazing. You can do so many things right from here. Oh my God. This seat is so heavy and it is quite upright. And if you see, it is already getting dirty. It's kind of sad. Let me push this seat behind. So this actually reclines by 30 degrees and you can move the seat ahead and behind by 100 mm which is a lot so i'm just going to push it all the way behind so they've given a lot of space in the second row that's the reason now third row has no space at all isofix child seat mounts here center passenger gets a head here as well door pockets are big enough it gets this new treatment which is quite nice you get it here as well aircraft style pockets ac vents placed here says mercedes benz right here in fact this is not removed and it's very difficult to remove so i'm just going to skip it but this also brightens up so obviously that's also illuminated in fact it gets a sun blind here it gets sun blind at i mean on both the sides of course and let's open the sun blind here for the sunroof because yes it is a massive panoramic sunroof this now manually you can move not electrically so it gets these dual 11.6 inch screens which was optional earlier and i think it might be optional now also i'm not too sure about it so let's not activate mercedes me let's skip it Using this, I can do almost everything which I can do at the front, including going into settings, going into navigation. I can also move the seats here. So let me just close the door first. And now let's get into the ambient lights. And I mean, everything can be done from here. 
it's very nice very easy to use of course yeah slick screen another one here in fact here you get another screen right there so it's sort of a tablet with which you can do the same thing which you're doing from here here or here so multiple stuff and you get a wireless charging pad meanwhile you get a usb-c charging socket right here yeah two of them so two here two there two there so six of them right there in fact you also get two usb-c charging sockets here yeah two usb-c charging sockets here two hdmis as well so that you can obviously see your favorite movie and ac controls here two zones ac vents right here two cup holders so this car is very comfortable okay let's just turn this off let's just shut this this thing is extended so the center passenger is not very comfortable because his knee is going to hit here for sure meanwhile the dashboard looks very impressive what is the change only the steering wheel i love the speaker says burmester here but come on heating and ventilation should have been given for the center passengers as well because at the end of the day this row pays for the people who are sitting in the first row so you have to give them priority and then obviously it has got soft closed door function there it pulls it inside to shut it as well it obviously gets the blind spot monitor it has got uh, adaptive cruise control a lot of additional bits have been added in fact it even says mercedes benz here but i'm disappointed that this car does not get the air balance package which is there in the gle glove box is big but where is the in-car perfume that is not there here which is not surprising it is shocking to me how does the lesser gle have it and the bigger gls not have it okay we need dynamic swipe indicators and the key is the same old mercedes key nothing has changed on that front but it gets a super chrome treatment in which i can see my own reflection unlock the car lock the car and this is to open the boot of the vehicle meanwhile it has got uh, uh, i think 13 speaker 590 watt burmester surround sound system it has got dolby atmos 360 degree sound and whatnot i love this treatment okay now finally it has got seat ventilation and seat heating yeah this feature was not there before it has been added now and using this i can control the co-passenger seat so that is a seat which everybody can control which means that that's not the best place to sit in of course a lot of information here about the vehicle and stuff in fact there's a proper dead pedal these are the controls for the lights and that is the electric parking brake this is just telling you that it has a knee airbag do not leave persons or animals in the vehicle okay i hate the word animal now after seeing that stupid movie <laughs> Door pockets are big enough. This is to open the boot of the vehicle. Metal switches, very high quality. Thankfully, they have not gone touch. But unfortunately, they have gone touch here on the steering wheel, which is not so nice. So I'm just going to adjust my seat. You see the seat is moving. The headrest is going up. This is going back. The steering is obviously going like inside. So you can adjust the lumbar as well. You can adjust this in multiple positions, which makes it very comfortable for you, obviously. In fact, under thigh support is never an issue because I can extend the under thigh support with a touch of a button. I love this new treatment, which is fantastic. And if you notice one thing, this thing is now finished in chrome. It was plastic earlier, so they have made this change as well. This has also come to the GLE, of course. There is no heads up display, which is shocking at this price point. Auto dimming, of course lights or multiple lights it has got connected car that's why it has sauce here and you get two sun blinds which is fantastic yes you can really blind the sun meanwhile the driver also gets a handle to hold on to let's open the sunroof and there it opens so it's a very big sunroof but why is there no sunroof for the third row of passengers why are they being ignored that's a massive it opens wind deflector let's shut this come on close 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 yeah the seats are really nice and comfortable but they are on the firm side and you can obviously adjust everything from here which is phenomenal the steering wheel is obviously new the car is shut off itself so we're going to turn it on right now in fact there is telling me the blind spot monitor got active 12.3 in screen 12.3 in screen let's turn off the air conditioning system okay i'm going to show you another thing here i press this and it says first row of seats second row of seats and third row of seats because it has got five zone climate control air conditioning but why is there no control for the third row passenger Imin light comes from here it comes from there Imin light is super cool in fact it obviously has got 64 colors for the ambient lighting and the best part is that you can get into multicolor and change it too but it doesn't have seat massage it has got seat kinetics which is sort of a massage but not the full deal of course so what has changed here it's become slicker they have updated the software of course and it's the usual bits which you see in mercedes cars however it now gets an off-road mode with a lot of information right there in fact it even gets the transparent bonnet which is a feature which has even come into the GLE so that is the change here now let's actually get into reverse this is how you get into reverse passive why are you getting confused so if you notice it obviously pops open the camera beautiful view and you also have this awesome 360 degree view so i'm just going to pinch it outwards with attention to detail which is amazing because when i give an indicator it shows the same and the color of the car also is the same 
fantastic cameras in this car really awesome so yeah this screen is phenomenal now yeah it was always phenomenal but it's even better and thankfully you've got proper buttons here so you've got a touchpad got multiple buttons here for navigation radio and all that which makes it super awesome to use and the navigation and all is also phenomenal look at the quality of the screen amazing now this has also been updated because you've got multiple views you've got understated sport classic navigation assistance and off-road along with service too so yeah it gives you this off-road mode which is nice padded shifters of course and this is the engine start button this has this piano black finishing the horn is quite nice this is for the cruise control adaptive cruise control now this is the controls for the audio system and to operate that screen but the problem is that these are not easy to use i don't like it i like the older one where they were proper buttons okay i love this nerd finishing you get two cup holders, ambient light is here as well, okay? Two USB-C charging sockets and a wireless charging pad. The problem is it's not easy to remove your phone from here. So that could have been done slightly better. There's another USB-C here with 100 watt charging. So that's fast. There's good amount of space here, of course. And this is to raise the right height of the vehicle, a proper dedicated switch for the same with knurled finishing. You can keep your hand like this and just operate this touchpad very nicely i love the touchpad it's absolutely fantastic where is this mosquito coming from why is he here i have no clue the dashboard looks very similar to the gle so they should have differentiated it a bit when compared to the gle of course and it's quite easy to use all this my knee does collide here but for the most part i have nothing to complain about when you actually unlock the car and sit inside now it actually splashes the mercedes logo and it has all these cool bits in fact it even does a nice light dance when you unlock the car and the lights turn on now a lot of attention detail a lot of cool bits but this is not really the s class of SUVs because the S-Class is so much more comfortable and luxurious. This is good. It's not great though but uh, you know the engine is the same so do we really need to drive also because yeah it I mean nothing do not leave persons or animals in the vehicle. I will not leave any animal in the vehicle. I will eat the animal and go yeah please stop it okay. Let's start driving right away. All right, let's start driving. First and foremost, let's turn off the air conditioning system and I'm going to turn off the ESP. But before that, okay, I have to keep this press band ho ja, bhai band ho ja. Now it is shut. So straight away, I'm going to get into this particular menu, which is settings and get into driving, get into collision avoidance and ESP, I'm going to turn off. Drive mode, I'm not going to change. I'll tell you later why. And we are going to get into the info menu here, vehicle and left foot on the brake, right foot on the accelerator, hazard lights off. Not in gear, that's why it's revving till 4000 RPM, otherwise it drives still. No, no, it just, oh my goodness, it just revs till 2000 RPM, off we go. Acceleration is exactly the same as before. There is no change here. This is the same engine as before. Everything is the same. So thank you so much for watching this video. If you like it, I mean, whatever, jokes aside. So Mercedes has made no changes to the petrol engine of this car because they didn't have to. It already had the 48 volt mild hybrid system, the ISG, the integrated starter generator. So this is the GLS 450 petrol, which is producing 375 horsepower and a torque output of 500 Newton meters. And then it gets a boost of 20 horsepower and 200 newton meters from the battery resulting in absolutely contained very well contained turbo lag that's the reason why this car feels very punchy in spite of the 2500 kgs weight of this vehicle so yeah the mid-range is nice it becomes vocal past 3000 rpm it's not a very fast revving motor it's not a very high revving motor either this is a three liter straight six motor the diesel is i think a 2.9 liter they call it three liter anyways that's also a straight six yeah inline six cylinder engine there is no four cylinder here thankfully and the diesel is now the 450d earlier we got the 400d which means 36 horsepower more and the torque output has increased by 50 newton meters the result is that the GLS 450D now produces quite a lot of power, yeah, 362 horsepower and 750 newton meters of torque. Both these cars, the petrol as well as the diesel, go from achha, haan, haan, kaafi aage, oh. go from 0 to 100 kilometers per hour in 6.1 seconds with a top speed restricted to 250 kilometers per hour and made it to a 9 speed torque converter automatic gearbox, which is not the fastest with shifts because it kind of fumbles at times, but it's not about speed of the shifts, it's all about smoothness where it really excels. The gearbox is nice, you get paddle shifters as well, so you can manually control the gearbox as well, saying manual right now. M3 m2 and there it is revving past 5000 rpm in fact 
there it will upshift around six and a half thousand rpm so it's not really giving me manual control of things the engine is vocal you can hear it in a sporty way otherwise the insulation is very nice because laminated glass and whatnot so insulation levels on the inside phenomenal which brings me to the drive modes of this vehicle there are just three of them there's comfort there's eco and there's off-road there is no sport drive mode in this car and suv does not have s in it yeah there is no sport mode which is quite shocking to me so eco mode obviously does performance comfort mode is the only mode you can drive wide because off-road mode is when you're going off-roading so beyond the speed that doesn't work either which actually brings me to the off-road mode here and we can also get into the off-road mode right here which is kind of cool which shows you the angles and all that but come on no sport mode in this car it's quite surprising to me honestly the good thing is that this engine is super duper refined it's so smooth it's so refined it's just like a wow it is unbelievable and it's very punchy as well it pulls hard i don't know how it manages to offer this kind of performance for a car which weighs so much it is 2500 kgs which is a lot of weight you don't feel that weight at all that's how well mercedes has managed to tune this or calibrate the car i mean it's unbelievable wipers work beautifully well a lot of spray there and the horn horn is always good yaar mercedes car nothing to complain about that but uh, the ride becomes way better at high speeds lower speeds now the ride isn't that good because the car kind of crashes through bumps firstly the wheels are way too big and way too low profile which doesn't need to be the case in an suv but mercedes is like let's do it why not because we can give big wheels so we will give them but this car does not need such big low profile wheels and that's something which hinders the ride quality of this car at lower speeds because the suspension is soft now so it does bob around a bit at high speeds because of the s suspension it beautifully smoothens out the ride is absolutely like gliding at higher speeds and no matter how fast you drive this car just remains glued to the road that is how good it is the only thing is you will obviously feel a lot of body roll in this car because it is obviously very high and because of the height you can feel the body roll the steering is on the lighter side yeah the steering is quite light and it still has good amount of feel and feedback this is not a very dynamic car it's not a car for the city because of its size and massive turning radius it's a car out on the highway at higher speeds it absolutely excels because of the air suspension it has got adaptive dampers it does not get anti roll bars because that's something which the GLS 63 and all the higher variants obviously get it in fact GLS 63 produces 630 horsepower which is absolutely insane that's a lot of power for a SUV of this size but unfortunately Mercedes has no plans to bring the GLS 63 to India the closest we are going to get to that engine the 4 liter bi turbo V8 is in the Mercedes Maybach the GLS Maybach because that has the same 4 liter bi turbo V8 engine in a lower state of tune but it also weighs a lot because of so many gizmos in that car in the city well you have to be really careful because of the size of the vehicle it is huge it's the massively big car and you can feel the weight you can feel the girth every time you're trying to take a U turn now because there is no rear wheel steering here yeah there blind spot monitor it has got now adaptive cruise control so they have added a few things here or there but there is no new thing in this particular engine it still has the same power the same output the same torque the same performance everything is more or less the same as before it okay i i did not talk to you please keep quiet uh, i don't know where she starts talking randomly but nobody even asked her but she will give you gan for no reason at all i don't know why a heads up display is missing here certain features which are there in this car should have been there in this car as well but uh, they are just missing i don't know why but mercedes is obviously uh, aiming to offer a lot of comfort and brand value with this car and there is where their aim is right now which brings me to the brake test strong 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 brakes what brakes amazing okay hazard on let's get out of this menu because i don't want the off road information right now instead first thing i'm going to do is turn off the traction control system and you have to always turn off the active brake assist also because super duper over sensitive here we get into engine data right here i'm going to change this into the sport one of course because that looks the best to me honestly left foot on the brake right foot on the accelerator has the lights off revving the motor rev still 2100 rpm Oh my goodness <laughs> performance is really good but if you notice one thing it has this nice animations going on about everywhere which is quite cool and there the engine seems quite calm at around 2400 rpm at 105 km/h so roughly 2000 
RPM at 100 km per hour so you just shift into a high gear and we are in the topmost gear which is ninth gear right now and the engine feels super calm but this engine drinks quite a lot of fuel if you rev it like the way I do it's going to return around 6 km per liter so don't expect double digit numbers from this car because of the weight it will return you around 5 to 8 km per liter depending on your driving style it has a GeForce meter too now this car has got wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto connectivity which is quite nice and it has 500 mm of water weighting capacity which actually brings me to the price of this car this car in the pre facelift format was priced at rupees 1.58 crores on road mumbai for the gls 400d i think and even the 450 costs roughly the same but the price is identical to the facelifted x7 which means with the facelift mercedes is going to increase the price of this car making it much more expensive than the bmw x7 the problem with the bmw x7 is it's a phenomenal car firstly the x7 has a lot of features it has those crystal effects here here and whatnot plus the x7 has massive screen the bigger screen here in the x7 definitely looks better to me and the x7 has a polarizing design most people like the design of the gls but the x7 also looks quite nice to a lot of people and it's huge very comfortable but the biggest usp of the x7 is that it drives better it has better ride it has better handling it has better steering feel so if you're looking to drive your car you're better off with the x7 because the x7 stays is true to being a BMW offering you sheer driving pleasure but if you're looking to be chauffeur driven in this car get chauffeur driven out on the highway because in the city now this car just does not impress because of the ride not being that great now obviously I am very attached to this car because the pre facelift model in red color was the car I had for one month which I drove from Mumbai to Hyderabad got married and drove back and a bird also greeted me <laughs> midway when I was returning so I really love the Mercedes GLS I think it's a fantastic car but we need the GLS 63 here ASAP they also have a GLS 350D by the way in India yeah, we never got the 350d thankfully we got the 400d which is discontinued and replaced by the 450d but globally there's the gls 350d which obviously has lesser power so thank you mercedes for not giving us the 350d and giving us the more powerful 450d which is quite quick i'll be honest about that okay let me quickly change this before that i'm noticing some information keeps coming down so it's telling me power and charge of course because obviously the battery system in this car works quite well and sometimes over time too so let's actually get into the assistance menu yeah that is cool so left foot on the brake right foot on the accelerator and off we go it corners really flat understeer is well controlled but if you notice now low speed pe to, uh, I mean any speed pe it crashes through the expansion joints because of the massive wheels and the soft suspension so that's something which could be better but I love this display yeah? where I'm applying a brake giving indicator all that can be seen here as well so that's the kind of attention to detail what Mercedes has gone with right here but if there's a car right in front of me like say the oh my god there it's telling me that's amazing so I quite like the way this has been done they are really acing the screen bit right now Mercedes of course and then there's this service menu as well which is basically telling me information I really don't care about and I don't need to see either so I'm just going to put the navigation one amazing screens oh, what amazing screens the only concern is that this car is going to cost slightly more when compared to the BMW X7 which isn't a great strategy considering the X7 is quite the car quite a good car and this car really needs rear wheel steering because the turning radius is obnoxiously high look at this okay I'm going to make a U-turn right now oh I told you now over these bumps and all the car is not that comfortable steering centers really nice and quickly and when I leave the throttle also at lower speed now the car keeps pulling ahead because of the mild hybrid system which is like tu apna dekh le. I'm going to pump in performance from my side and that works really well so with the facelift the X7 also has got mild hybrid it seems like Mercedes and BMW sit on the same table and decide okay let's do one thing let's put mild hybrid in the 48 volt ISG in all our cars with the facelift actually the thing is European regulations mandate the car being a hybrid then only it can be sold otherwise the CO2 emissions would be quite a lot and uh, Mercedes was obviously offering us the mild hybrid earlier also with the GLS 450 petrol but now it's come to the diesel and obviously BMW has gone ahead and given us the 40D now which has quite the performance so in terms of which car is better well it's quite apparent that the X7 being cheaper makes a lot more sense Mercedes really needs to price its cars more aggressively because BMW somehow in the past couple of years sat up ticket notice and up 
its challenge to Mercedes Benz by offering some really amazing cars because I genuinely love the BMW X7. I love the GLS as well. I just wished it was more comfortable. The ride quality was better at lower speeds. Otherwise, it's a fantastically very well loaded car. But at the end of the day, I just feel I'm driving a GLE. And in the X7 also, I feel I'm driving an X5. So what is this, guys? Come on, at least differentiate your cars. Don't give us the same cars by extending it into three row vehicles, which actually brings me to the history of the Mercedes GLS. It started life in 2006 as the Mercedes GL, a three row unibody SUV with front engine, four Matic, four wheel drive system, of course. And then they went and gave it the second generation model in 2012, I think. And in 2015, they gave it the facelift. With the facelift, now they decided, bahut ho gaya. Ab isko GL nahi bolenge. now we will call it, what is this no device connected? Okay, it's locked me out of what? Yeah, so then they came up with the brilliant idea of renaming the car from GL to GLS. And that is when the GLS was born. And the same time, they also named the GLK as the GLC or somewhere around that time. And then they renamed the ML to GLE. So everything has to be GL. And then in 2019, they came up with the third generation of the GLS, which got a facelift in 2023, April. And now we are in January 2024. Mercedes has given us the facelift and model after 10 months of its international debut. That's quite a lot of waiting period. I expected the car to have come sooner. Lane Keep Assist is obviously there. Uh, where, 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 where is your lane? It's just blinking. It's not telling me to get back into the lane. Or I mean, it's telling me to get back into the lane, but it's not really pulling me back into the lane. Maybe the setting might be off, but uh, this car is really, I mean, it feels like a house on wheels. It's quite nice. It's fantastic to say the least. I really like it. What do you think about the GLS? I'm waiting for the Maybach version because with the Maybach, I can also bounce. And obviously the four liter bite turbo V8 is the engine to have. Hopefully they don't downsize it. Imagine the C43 engine coming in the GLS Maybach that would be the disappointment of the year so guys this is my vlog of the mercedes gls 450 the facelift nothing to talk about in terms of the engine it is the same as before i wish the engine was more powerful they obviously offer the four liter bi turbo v8 in multiple formats across various variants abroad but in india people really don't care about the performance i think the diesel is going to sell if you're looking to buy a gls just get the diesel because the diesel is a diesel is a freaking diesel bye bye